everybody, and welcome to Casa Loud Chats, a podcast dedicated to Nickelodeon's The Casa Grandes and the Loud House universe. And I'm your host, Sunny, and welcome to episode 41 of Casa Loud Chats. And today we are dubbing it the Casa Loud Chats Christmas special because today we're going to be discussing the two, uh, the three, uh, we're going to be discussing the Christmas episodes of The Loud House and The Casa Grandes on today's show. But today I'm actually not alone in talking about these special episodes of both shows. I have not one, but two special guests to talk about these episodes today. My first guest is, an- is, a re- is another returning guest. You know him on Twitter as Vincent Servok. Welcome back to my show, Vincent. Hey, uh, hey everybody. Hey, Sunny. <laughs> it's good to be back here. I'm you very too. excited. You too. Uh, yeah, when you you DM me asking to come back to the show so fast to talk about the Christmas episodes, of course I was excited, but I was like, why specifically these episodes? But then, but before you answer, I want to say that my second guest you decide to have on with you as well is, of course, you all know her. She's been on here so many times on my show, of course. It is my best friend in the fandom, Wyoming Parmesan, a.k.a. Nat. Welcome back to my show again, Nat. Happy to be here, especially with Sunny and with Vincent. And this is my first time being on here with Vincent also, so it's nice to be back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, nice, it's nice to to be here with you too, Nat. Yeah. But again, uh, Vincent, to ask you, why did you decide to have Nat on with you for this episode? For this episode, talk about the Christmas ones. Well, all three of us are, are, are big Ronnie shippers, uh, and uh, you know when we first saw the, the promo for, for it, uh, the Casa Grande's uh, Christmas special, you know we saw that uh, that the promo of uh, the louds at. at at the apartment, and like, uh, oh man, what, what's gonna go down? And oh, is there gonna be any cameras? <laughs> but we, we, we're gonna be in some sort of interactions, but uh, but we will get, get, get to that later. Yeah, we'll definitely get to that because there was just so, like, for me personally, there's just so much to digest with that cameo. I'm just saying, like, yeah, there's gonna be a lot to talk about with just that cameo but yeah it, it, it's very again so, so thank you guys so much for coming on for this very special episode because we're going to be talking about christmas related episodes for the season of course but now we're going to get into some casa news All right, so for this week, for for news of the Loud House and the Casa Grandes, there isn't much news, but most of it is big news, though. <laughs> most of it revolving around the Casa Grandes because apparently there were supposed to be new episodes that were supposedly going to air this week, but, you know, Nick didn't do that because, of course, this is December, and it's usually the highest month, and we just had new episodes well, Casa Grande's had new episodes in December for the first time ever in their run. Loud House, this isn't a new thing for them. But we were like, okay, we're done with the Christmas episodes. We're done for the season. We're, you know, we're done for this year until 2021. But for someone at a- someone that Nick did not tell Amazon that we're not having new episodes. Because they leaked four new episodes on Amazon for you to watch and pay for. Now, um, I won't be talking about these episodes with you guys on the show because I want to save them for the official U.S. release and uh, Vincent hasn't seen them Nat and I have seen them but yeah to say what they are it's guilt trip shortcut no egrets and meal ticket which on my last show I didn't have a description for meal ticket now we do it's about Roddy and Sid helping Casey run his family food truck to see a Yuquan concert so again no spoilers for the episode but I don't know should we talk about the sneak peek they posted because they posted a sneak peek of the episode Meal Ticket on the YouTube page. So, would that be okay, or is that still a spoiler? Have you seen it, Vincent? Yeah, I have. Okay, he's okay. seen that one. Okay, yeah. So, basically, that sneak peek. Again, somebody in Nickelodeon didn't tell them the memo. But, yeah, these episodes were supposed to air. And they, they released the last six minutes of the episode. On the YouTube page. So you can watch that if you, if you don't care about spoilers. But it is the last six minutes of the episode. Meal Ticket. Which is a Roddy and Sid episode. It was really cute though. I, I like that clip. Did you guys enjoy that clip from what you saw? Yeah it was really cute. 
Yeah, uh, very interested to, to, to go well together, especially with the fa fa famous boy Yun Kwan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're be they're well. That here is a expert on K-pop and J-pop stuff, so I bet you enjoyed that stuff. I bet, I bet, yeah. I bet Roddy and Sid be huge fans is what it's like to be a fan of those groups, you know. Yeah, pretty much, and just wanting them to notice you, and and I know that like um. I'm glad that they showed the kid like they're actually singing this time because like one of the complaints I had was like anytime they show them listening to K-pop, it's just instrumental music. I was like, like no, you there is more to it. Like they in actual K-pop, they do sing in Korean, but I know that since this is in the English version of this show, they're gonna be singing in English, of course. So now it makes me wonder if you watch the Korean dub, if it's like you're listening to actual K-pop. Yeah, well, do do the bands like <laughs> do they perform in in uh, English too, or just um? It depends, like the, on which group it is, because a lot of K-pop nowadays like has become very mainstream here in the U.S., and so there's a lot of K-pop groups like BTS, Twice, um, probably other ones I'm not thinking of. They have songs they that are in English, or like they make English versions of their songs now to kind of try to cater more towards the american audience but they do sing in korean most of the time and they do japanese also yeah so who voices yu kwan his name is justin jane j lee or jt he's in a k-pop group called bta have you ever, or bg or bga i don't know which one it is but he's in a k-pop group so he is he is part of it so that's what makes it more authentic than just getting like hey. a sound alike or someone who could sound yeah. like k-pop you know, member. It's actually someone who's part of a K-pop group, so that makes it more authentic. Because, like, when I posted yeah. about it, someone was like, I, someone had that same complaint now, that they were, they were they were singing English, but then I told them it's actually somebody who's part of a K-pop group. So it's okay. Yeah, yeah. And I, like I said, it's an American show, so of course, you know, they're gonna sing in English. Because, like, even in the Casa Grandes, they might have, like, Spanish words, but they're still speaking English because it's an English show. But... Yeah, I guess they changed his voice because he was voiced by Eric Nam. And Eric Nam is an actual, he's a K-pop artist too. So I'd have to look into that. I've never heard of this guy before. Yeah, I looked him up and apparently it listed him as an American actor, but he's in a K-pop group. I think it's called BGA or BTJ. I can't remember. It's something like that. Like, I thought it was BTS. Okay. But say like something like that. So No. Okay. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be so cool, though. Like, I, I'm not like K -pop, yeah. but BTS, their new song I heard was like actually pretty good. So, not Um, was it Life Goes On? Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, that one is good. And they actually do have a member that speaks English, too. So, maybe one day. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so again, if you want to see the sneak peek for Meal Ticket, it is up on the YouTube page. It is still there. I don't know if they're going to take it up to town. Maybe they will once they find out they made a goof about it. But also with the two episodes, or the four episodes, two in each, two in each episode, you can buy them on Amazon. If you have Prime or just Amazon, they're like two ninety nine, pretty cheap. You, know, you can buy them and watch them. But again, don't post spoilers about the episodes on, or tag them as spoilers, but don't post about them until the official U.S. release, which will probably be in early 2021. So, you know, just, just wait a yeah. month to talk about them. And then, you know, because there's a lot of good stuff in the episode, I could say that. But, you know, wait till 2021, yeah. and then we can all talk about it. And I'll have an episode about mm -hmm. it next year. All right. So, and I do... Th yes, no I do think... Oh, I said I think they took down the first two but the other two are still on there yeah so if you bought the first two episodes guilt trip and shortcut i still have them but if you didn't purchase them the day they came out they did they, they, they did take them down so i bought the two other episodes no egrets and meal ticket today or yesterday was it today i think it was today they released 3 a.m right yeah yeah so i have <laughs> them but again they might take them down once you purchase them but yeah but i mean they are early releases, but if you are buying them on Amazon, technically you're supporting the show by buying yeah. them. So if you can still purchase the episodes, you can. But remember, they are early releases, so don't spoil them. The title cards are up for everybody to see. That's not too spoily, but the episodes themselves, just don't talk about them until they come out probably next year. Okay, so as for that, the only other thing I have for news for the Casa Grandes is that the Season 1 DVD is going to be coming out next year. We're getting a full 
season of the Casagrande, season one, the entire season on DVD next year. The Ladder House didn't even get that. They got like all these multiple seasons and DVDs. I don't know what yeah. volumes. I don't understand why they did that for the Loud House, but yet the Casa Grandes gets a full DVD release. I mean, then, yeah. then again, the Casa Grandes mm -hmm. only had 20 ep 19, 20 episodes in season one versus the Loud House, who always has 25. But yeah. it's still strange. I mean, it's cool. I can't wait to have it in my collection, but still, it's very interesting to decide to do a full release of it on DVD that just slice it into two volumes, like the Loud House. Yeah, so maybe we, you know, how we always get a Loud House DVD every year. So, yeah. like, they've already, the first two seasons are available. So, I think this next year they'll probably do the first half of season three. But that'd be kind of cool if they would just release the whole, like, a box set of the whole season. Yeah, they should do that eventually. What's the show? And especially over? because, yeah. Yeah, especially, yeah, especially because Nickelodeon, like, that's what they do now is like they've been releasing, like, box sets of some of their other cartoons and so i'm like why don't they do that with the loud house too yeah i think eventually like, once the show is over they can do like a full-on collection with the loud house the casa grandes and like the movie yeah. that gets on dvd or something like they could do a full yeah. collection like that if they can or less to split up the shows but it'd be cool to get like a full yeah. band set of both shows together would be really cool yeah, that I was gonna say because they split Avatar and The Legend of Korra into two different box sets. So anyway, they can make more money. I guess. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's gonna be coming out next year. I believe it's March when it's releasing on DVD or February. I can't remember. It's early February first, I think. Oh, oh well, okay. Well, I'm getting it early. That's my birthday month. <laughs> Happy birthday to me! <laughs> present. That's my birthday present that year. Yeah, all right. And when Yeah. When does the first um, Cross of Grandi's graphic novel come out? Because I, I know that's I soon, too. I believe it's in March. I believe it's in March. Okay. Although, yeah, I got some secrets about that, that comic. I can't say because I got a source on it, but they told me there's some really good stuff in that one. I mean, I know there's going to be... Um, it's going to be a, a collection of... Um, or of, of uh, comics that were in the other Loud House ones with Casa Grandes, but there's going to be a few new stories, but again, I can't say much, but what's, what they told me about it, I'm more excited now. <laughs> You'll understand. You'll get it. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's all the news. Of course, not much. I mean, the big news was that the episodes got leaked on Amazon, but again, most of it's Casa Grandes. No Loud House news right now. Nothing about new episodes from them. Hopefully they don't leak out the new Loud House episodes either. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they will. I have no idea. But since please don't. Yeah. <laughs> and I was gonna do YouTube <laughs> updates, but I'll say that for another episode. Um. So we're just gonna jump into our discussion on the episodes then. So we're gonna start with the Casa Grande special because that's what aired first. The big, the first Casa Grande Christmas uh, episode, the first big Christmas episode, a very Casa Grande's Christmas. Roddy is excited for the f perfect Christmas, but visits from the neighbors put her dream Noche Blowa on hold. So they celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve, which is very interesting, of course. But um, before we dive into the special and analyze everything and stuff, I want to ask you guys your your personal opinion on the episode as a whole, as a special. Um, Vincent, I'd like you to go first. What did you think about the Casa Grande Christmas special overall as a special? Like overall, like I thought that the story w w was very solid, um, very heartwarming. Uh, um, especially you know with, with Bobby singing to, to all the neighbors, uh, um, and, and everyone's just coming uh, coming together uh, for for this uh, uh, holiday night. It was a very very, 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 very touching for for me. Uh, um, and then the ending, um, <laughs> just <laughs> of course the ending. Yeah, we'll talk about the ending. Um. Nat, what about you? What do you think about a very Casa Grande's Christmas as a whole? Pretty solid Christmas special. Like, I don't know if I would put it on the level of, like, the Loud House Christmas episode, like the first one. But they, I think, when you look at them both, though, they're both pretty solid Christmas episodes for the first one. So, with this one, I also liked that they kind of focused on Ronnie and um wanting to spend time with her dad because like if you think about it this is probably no this is the first christmas that they've had their dad with them in a few years and so i think it's just very sweet that she was so 
adamant about wanting to spend time with her dad. And also, I liked the little, um, I can't remember what it's called, but the, I guess it's like a Mexican thing that they do for Christmas. I think it was, a, I think it was huh? a, a last, I think it was last uh, upon, uh, what's it called? Uh, oh, last, last Posadas. Yes, yeah. yeah, where they get candy and stuff. And so I have to look into that because I actually was not aware of that. But yeah, I liked that part of it. And yeah, I did think, well, I was going to say, I thought Ronnie Ann, like, it seemed like she was being a little selfish, but in, but then you look at it and you kind of understand, like, you know, she's just an 11, 12 year old girl who just wants to spend time with her dad who, ha who she hasn't seen in years. So it's understandable. Yeah, as for me, you know, I, I of course, love the Casa Grandes, and all the specials they've done have been really solid, of course. I mean, again, my mixed opinion on Operation Dad, but still sp solid special. Absolutely love Curse, of course. But then getting, of course, another hard hitter with a Christmas special, and their first Christmas special, you know, again, like Matt said, I don't think it lives up to the top tierness that is level out to leaping that episode is absolutely perfect in every possible way and this episode to me has a lot of flaws a lot of things i'll get into later but mostly what nat said i thought radia was being very very selfish especially the way that she said like oh man like if it wasn't for those dang neighbors getting in the way, you know, it's like, Ronnie, and first of all, one of those dang neighbors is your best friend, by the way. I'm just saying. Wow. You know? That's just so mean. Jeez. And, and, yeah. and they're like, you know, they show that they really like these neighbors. I was like, no. Like, yeah. Like, I, I totally understand that she wanted to spend time with her family. They had these plans. I know the feeling of, like, waiting for your family to to like do stuff before you want to get out and stuff but again i felt like the way she treated the the neighbors especially like bobby and ronnie and just like wanting to kick them out was like really selfish especially because we've seen them like have the neighbors over like and face the music they came over or other times they come over like now you suddenly want to kick them out all right but you know that's a nitpick but i did really like yeah. um that this episode was mainly focused on Bobby and Ronnie Ann. Because again, they're right they're, they're one mm -hmm. my, they're my favorite sibling pairing at the moment of any of the pairings in the shows. Cause I just love them because they're brother and sister, and it, like of course Lincoln has a bunch of sisters, whereas Ronnie Ann only has Bobby. And we've barely seen them like actually like bond in the show much. So to see them just be with each other for an entire episode, you know, worried about their dad trying to help him out was really sweet and I'm hoping there's they're leading to an actual Bobby and Roddy and Body episode. But again, yeah, it was just really nice again to see them put in, you know, Hispanic traditions of what it's like to celebrate their Christmas. Because again, they celebrate it on Christmas Eve, which is really cool. Like they they, they celebrate it then. And like I love the animation. The soft Bobby singing of course was great. You know, having all like them fitting all the neighbors in the apartment building looked crazy, but it was really cool. And of course the ending, you know, we'll talk about the ending, but yeah, you know, very <laughs> solid, you know, I, I think I'll put it below Level Loud to Leaping as a Christmas special, but it was still very enjoyable. I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. But um, before we get into that, I, you know, I think you guys have waited long enough. We need to talk about that ending. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. You know, um. So, you know, I, we all knew that the labs were showing up. They showed in the promo. We were all excited at the potential of what could happen. And technically, I was right that it was at the end and it was going to be a cameo. And yeah, I was. But Lincoln got a line. That's all yes. that matters. <laughs> at least it, they had that. Yes. <laughs> the line that he said, okay, there's so many ways to interpret what he actually said. Because he was like, uh... Okay, first of all, he said, Ola, Mrs. Casagrande, which, first of all, he's, he's starting to become part of the family, because he says, Ola, like, yeah. You know what I'm um, but then he says, like, um, you know, we were, we were picking up Lori from college, but Vanzilla broke down. Can we spend Christmas with you guys? So, what do you guys think of that moment of, like, saying that, that Vanzilla broke down, and they want to join them? Like, what do, you, what do you guys think of that moment? Predicted it, because... I was like, as the special is going on, I'm like, oh, they're going to use this as a gag to say, like, oh, we need more food. And I was like, that's what they're going to do. 
And I think it's just fun because, like, we know that these two shows are connected, but it's always just fun to be reminded, like, oh, yeah, these shows take place in the same universe. And so I just like it that they use that as, like, clickbait in the trailer to be like, oh, this is, this is an end after Cursed of all episodes because they were in that one. Yeah. And then you have a trailer where you see the louds again and it's like, wait a minute, another crossover? But no, it was just that little gag. And it reminded me of the one that they did at the end of Croaked where Carl just ends up at the loud house yeah. and it plays the theme song. Oh my god. Like, <laughs> I still think back to that moment. I still think back to that moment where like, you know, Croaked premiered on YouTube and we all saw the ending. We all lost our minds. It was like, yeah. 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 They had it like on one of those live streams yeah. where you can't like rewind it. And so when I started the video, it was on the ending and I was just oh like, my God, what? Yeah, that's where it started. <laughs> I'm like, what? What? <laughs> I reminded <laughs> that they're still in the same universe. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy how far we come with the crossover. Because like, you know, in, in that moment, that was the first like side of crossover with, Con with, with Carl ending up the Loud House. Then all of a sudden we get cursed. Look at that development of the crossover. <laughs> <laughs> at the house. <laughs> uh, but uh, Vincent, what about you? What do you think of Lincoln's <laughs> little cameo at the end of the episode? Well, uh, I think I, I was really anxious when we first saw the uh, the promo for for, for that. Uh, and uh, hey, hey, yeah, uh, I was at the uh, I was posted there on Twitter like uh, there was a, just like just a cameo. I was gonna, gonna go go mad, but uh, yeah, it did turn out to be a cameo. But at least Lincoln did did have a line, so it's better than than uh, and he it's better than just uh, uh, just uh, showing up with, with, for, for, for no apparent reason. <laughs> um. But, but yeah, I, I realized, uh, you know, we had the last of the Cossack Rise already in Curse, which was, I think was about as enough as we can get. And, um, and like, had to, it did start again. Like, I, I probably, probably be more than, than, than enough for all of us. But, but yeah, um, for me, like, like let's let's do, do some, I have some pros and cons for, for this. Okay. Um, pro. Um, pro, like at least <laughs> had a line. Uh, um, but the, the numbers, uh, um, a reason uh, to uh, to stay the Casa Grande so, uh, for, for Christmas, <laughs> and they, they had the, the numbers so on their faces. Uh, con, it was only for ten seconds, <laughs> and uh, you know, it had, it had they done a couple of minutes of, of, of uh, some interactions with. Look, had had like had, had uh, interactions with like uh, uh, Sid uh, and Ronnie Yang because you know I'm a diehard Sid fan, oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, maybe uh, 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 some quick interaction with uh, uh, Arturo, <laughs> but uh, but but no, you, you, you can't expect the things to, to go the way you you, you you can't expect the things to the way you go you would think, <laughs> and um, what else was I going to say? Um, uh, but yeah. But, but it's still, I think this is better than, than just uh, uh, for dropping a for no apparent reason. And I think we can say that after the, uh, the, that night, I guess, um, I, I guess a reason of a few questions for me. Like, I guess, I guess the desperate way to get us to know uh, all the, the, the whole Lincoln's whole, whole family. And uh, maybe that's a lot of, I like it, to, a lot of, I like it to know each other. <laughs> that, that, that just makes me think about that. But, um, but yeah, it's just a, a, a lot of thoughts that, that, that come to that after the last just visit the just visit the apartment at, at the end. Um, but that, that's my, but yeah, that, that, that that's sort of, that, that's my analysis for that cameo. <laughs> so I'm gonna go about this. Um, yeah. So uh, this cameo, you know, again, it was only like a few moment, a few a few, se a few minutes, which of course again. I was very happy that Lincoln got a line. I was worried that they were just going to show up and wave and that was it. Like, everybody was not even going to, like, it was going to fade to black. But, yeah, the fact they gave Lincoln a line was enough for me to, like, scream and be happy and I won. Yay! I was, like, celebrating, you know? But, um, okay. So, you know, there's a lot to think about with that specific um, moment. Because, like you said, 
the way that Lincoln is gesturing, you know, he looks very awkward. And of course, he looks very nervous <laughs> by saying like, oh, we just came to pick up Gloria College. The Fanzilla broke down. Like, why is he looking so nervous when he says that? Why? Because he's a big fat liar <laughs> loud. You, no no we all know why you're there <laughs> oh, come on come on you, you don't have to lie to come to casa Grande's. we all know why you're there you want to see ronnie and it's okay but the thing is like again saying that and at the end with all their big grins I think the family's on it. I think they're on, they're all in on the plan, you know? They all know Lincoln wanted to see Ronnie in. They helped out in some sort of way. They wouldn't be smiling that awkwardly if they weren't in on the plan. Because, like, the thing is, like, you would think that Lori would want to see Bobby, right? Because, again, they're dating. But, again, in this, in this scene, it's Lincoln who has the line. He's the one in the middle. Like, Mary Curse and Ronnie in was in the middle, right? And so he's the one saying that Fanzilla broke down. And my headcanon, I made this huge headcanon on, on Twitter about it. I won't read the whole thing, but I, I made this headcanon where Lincoln, you know, like the entire family went off to, to uh, pick up Lori off, off uh, at college. And Lincoln's like, wait, you know, I, I just remember that Fairway is about a half hour from the city, right? And so, like, he, he asked Lana, hey, Lana, can you, can you do me a favor? Uh, can you have Vanzilla break down in front of Great Lake City? And Lana's like, why? Um, no reason. You know, I, I, oh, I know why. Because, Lori, you want to see Bobby, right? And Lori's like, yeah, sure. I want to see Bobby, yeah. And Lana's just like, no, Lincoln, we all know you want to see Ronnie. <laughs> and, and so, like, they break down in front of Great Lake City. They, the car breaks down, and they're like, oh, no. Lincoln's like, oh, no. Vanzilla broke down. What, a, what 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 bad luck! And then he turns around and sees the cast and Billy. Like, oh, what a coincidence! We just happened to break down in front of the cast and building. Lori, you want to see Bobby, right? Let's go. And Lori's like, <clears throat> Lori's like, Lincoln, what are you up to? And Lincoln's like, oh, nothing. I I know you just want to see your boyfriend for Christmas, right? And and she's like, yeah, you want to see Ronnie, and don't you? And Lincoln just goes, shut up, Lori. That's my head <laughs> That's my head again. Like, again, the fact that Lincoln looks so nervous when he's saying that Vanzilla broke down in quotation marks, and he's like, again, puts his hand behind his back and looks so awkward saying it. Because again, I don't feel like he would be awkward saying this if it actually happened. I think it was part of his whole plan just to see Ronnie in on Christmas, and he got his entire family in on it and told them the whole thing. It was like, okay, guys, yeah, I want to see Ronnie in. Is that so much to ask? And they're like, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> we all know, Lincoln. We all know. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. Like, that, that <laughs> like, I just, like, that moment to me felt like the biggest win for me that night. Because, like, they wrote this scene for me to analyze the heck out of it. And, again, it's only a few minutes. But there's so much to think about with that moment and being like, no. Lincoln Loud, you are the biggest liar and you will admit to yet you wanted to see Ronnie yet eventually, you liar. <laughs> it's okay, buddy. You'll get there someday. You'll get there someday. <laughs> and also, another thing is yeah. Lori has her own car. So That's true. Like <laughs> so, oh, 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 yeah. Uh, like, she could have just uh, 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 drove up to where I was all by herself. But, uh, Wait a but... minute. Oh, my God. I just thought of something. <laughs> okay. What if it was Lincoln's idea to pick up Lori? You know, he told mom and dad that he wants them to all go see Lori because, you know, we're family. We all want to go see Lori, right? We all got to pick her up and see her again. We haven't seen her in a few months, right? And then Teddy's just like, I can see Roddy in the, in the Great Lake City. This is my whole plan. <laughs> <laughs> Cause he would do that. He would have like a whole like PowerPoint about it, a presentation, and the whole plan he has up in his room just to, just to I don't know, he sabotages Lori car or something. So they have to pick her. Up. Yeah, cause you're right. She has her own car. Why are they picking her up? Unless she just left it there. But you can't leave a car there during holiday break. So yeah, yeah. I think some Lincoln's plan got something up with that. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. The, 
I'm really happy they gave us though that though, because again, like you said, these two worlds, uh, these two shows exist in one world, of course. So they they always got to remind us of that. But again, it could have been Lori who said, "Oh, hi, Bobby, I'm here to see you," or you know, her saying that the car broke down. But again, Link is the one that said it. I'm just saying, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, readings there that he wanted to see Ron in. I'm just saying, we all know why you're there, so yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, uh, oh, go ahead. You know, who, who knows? Hey, no, who knows? Oh, uh, Miguel, who, who got a plan for 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 for, for Pulte shows? <laughs> after the big moment, yeah. they cursed. That whole like dramatic <laughs> moment, Roddy and Lincoln, and after this, I'm like, I feel like there's something they're planning with after these two. Because like after having that, having curse, and then having the Lincoln cameo after that is like, I see you, Casa Grandes. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can go on and on about that cameo, but we can't. <laughs> I can't say on it yeah. Um But uh, unless, is there anything else you guys want to say about the cameo before we jump into other stuff in the in the special? I think um, that's good. Um, I will say. Um, I think I, I, after after the, the, that uh, debacle, I I think. Uh, now I'm just wondering if we'll actually get an official uh, Loud House and Casa Grande's crossover for Christmas special, but oh I don't God. know what, but, but yeah, what the, what the chances are. Probably going to take uh, another year or two. Who knows what Miguel's going to do for us. <laughs> yeah, or another, like, holiday, like, Valentine's Day. Hello? <laughs> Could happen. Yeah, I think, I think it'll have to be, like, an hour long. Yes, oh make, make it an hour long. An hour long crossover episode would be like the dream. That would be like Avengers Endgame, man. Like that would be amazing. Oh yes. god. Yeah, but uh, how about? Yep, no, go ahead. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, how about at least it gives us uh, some sardonic moments yeah. in it? And how about uh, like it right at the mistletoe? Yes. <laughs> yes. My dream episode is a full twenty-two minute episode about. Lake and Roddy and Sid, like, I've always wanted that. But if it's just 11 minutes, I just want a full episode with those three. Just give it to me, and then I'll, I'll oh. take it. Um, <laughs> give, it to, give it to us. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, is there uh, anything else in the special you guys want to discuss? Any highlights from a very Casagrande Christmas you guys want to discuss? Whoever wants to go first. Uh, I, I don't, don't know if I, I could say these highlights, but we did learn some things. Uh, uh, like you know, Becky has a toy, twin boyfriend and named uh, Ricky, and then uh, we did l l learn that that uh, uh, Koi is in fact is, is in fact Mr. Nakamura's son. So yes. yeah, that was cool. Yeah, Miguel confirmed that on Instagram, which is pretty cool. Um, I liked that we got more backstory with Bobby and Rodia because Arturo said last Christmas and. <laughs> Rodian and Bobby didn't look any younger there, so I'm thinking that, and that was in Royal Woods, like that, they saw that it was in Royal Woods, because that was a reused background from uh, Little Louds of Leaping, but it was from Royal Woods, so, and they said last year, so I'm thinking Arturo might have visited them during the holidays, but he was probably still away in Peru, but I'm thinking he probably visited them sometime when they were still in Royal Woods, but that's my head cannon, but it's always nice to get little glimpses of flashbacks with Roddy and Bobby in Royal Woods, but I still want more. <laughs> so it was nice to get that. Yeah. Um, I like the song. Bobby's a great singer. <laughs> Love the song. So great. Yeah, because it's Carlos from Big Time Rush. Yeah. <laughs> you, can't, you can't go wrong with him. <laughs> no. He was thinking throughout the entire episode trying to figure out a song. And also all the nice cameos we got from different characters from from uh different episodes of season one like the one guy from going overboard the magic lady from the cat episode and of course nikki casey samir and casey's dad who appears in meal tickets so that was really cool to see him oh first. yeah yeah so he appears in that episode but it was really neat because like casa grande is always good on that continuity loud house learn some things well they're getting there we'll get there <laughs> <laughs> they're getting there. We'll we'll talk about that soon. But um, uh, anything else you guys want to talk about with Casa Grande Christmas? Uh, I think I'm good. Yeah, I think at this point, uh, I think we pretty much covered everything. All right. Well, I'm also gonna say, you know, I've had complaints with Arturo staying since the beginning. 
because I've complained about how they just don't utilize him as a character in the show. And I'm glad that in this special, he actually got more to do as a character. So it's nice to see that they're finally giving Arturo some focus and showing more of his bonding with Bobby and Roddy Ann. And, like, at the end where he hugged Maria, too, like, it's nice that, you know, Arturo and Maria are divorced, but there's no bad blood with them. They're still cool with each other. We, they can all be family, and that's really nice. So, I want to see more from Arturo, because I always complain yeah. that he's never there, but it's nice to see that at least they gave him something to do as a little subplot. So, that was nice. But, yeah, mm-hmm. overall, a really, a really solid Christmas episode. Again, not as amazing as Level Outs of Leaping, but, you know... Just a really nice watch for Christmas episode, for the first Casagrande Christmas episode in the show. All right, so let's move over to The Loud House, which had two episodes related to Christmas. We're going to talk about the first one, which is Seasons Cheating. Lincoln tries to to mess with the family gift swap. So um, what do you guys think of this episode, Seasons Cheating? Um, Vincent, you go first. What do you think of this episode, Seasons Cheating? Man, this episode was very heartwarming for for, for me. Um, you know, uh, uh, for, first we heard the story, a uh, 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 synopsis uh, at first, or uh, well, not a synopsis, a plot, I should say. We first heard the plot. I was still kind of uh, skeptical, like, oh, oh no, like has Lincoln, <laughs> what's Lincoln up to? But then, hey, yeah, hey. I know how, how much uh, you defend uh, your boy, Sonny. <laughs> and, uh, yes. And, you know, he's still 11, he's still young. 12. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, right, 12. 12 uh, now. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and, no, he's still, still uh, got, got up much to, to learn. And, um, you know, the, the story went, went, went better than, than expected. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, there was some very, very hard moments, and, yeah, um, there was some, some some things things I really liked. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's see. Um, I, I like that uh, that uh, uh, Lincoln and Luna had, had some interaction in this episode. Um, oh, yeah. I've always loved the, the relationship between those uh, two. Uh, uh, the fact that, uh, that he he was will we'll, we'll just swap, swap with uh, that she was willing to, to, to swap with uh, Lincoln. Like she was she was uh, totally cool cool with that. Uh, and, and even uh, Lily was uh, cool with that too. Uh, and um, let's see. Oh, oh yeah, there, there, there was uh, also uh, some uh, some t- t- some scenes that I kind of t- take it back to the sweet spot. Although I, I do uh, like this episode way better than sweet uh, than the sweet spot. Um, oh yeah, that's a hot take. I love sweet spot. That's a t- that's a that's one of my favorite season one episodes. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Oh, 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 okay. I mean, I don't know if it, you, you can blame me, but about, about the ending. No, <laughs> no, I don't blame you. I think it's a really funny episode. Yeah, you know, especially with Lincoln trying to curse in the Vanzilla and like all the moments of him trying to swap. I think it's a really funny episode, but I can agree that if you don't like it that much. <laughs> okay. And now, oh, now, as I was saying, um, yeah, there was do, 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 do a, a nice uh, nice to, to, to the episode, like, like it's just kind of, kind of uh, playing the, the things uh, out, and uh, you know, he's kind of screaming at Vance a lot. And uh, let's see what else what I want to say. Um, oh, 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 yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, oh yeah. And uh, oh, one thing I, I don't like is Oh, Chandler! Uh, oh. Hey, hey, no, at least he had to put those gifts of for for Lola, but he had to to, to give up his gift for from Lincoln had to give up his rip hardcore backpack from Luna for, for that. Um, but, but yeah, at least he got the presents for for, for Lola, and. Uh, you know that 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 was a really hard one to see between those two, and 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 then to twist at the end with with like giving him her being a painting like that was really 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 beautiful to see. That 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 was probably the best. Those the two scenes were probably the the best part of of this episode. You know, and then. And then the the the, the, the connections uh, that 
I, I posted on, on Twitter uh, uh, some connections between uh, some previous episodes that that, that, can, that, can, that I can relate to. Um, uh, should I uh, should I say, uh, mention it? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Yeah, all right. So, uh, one of her, uh, uh, I mean, Lola, her, her again, like, like, it just, it just it gives you the, the same vibes as like, it came off with, with, with the interaction between uh, Lana and Lincoln at the end, and as, and then as well as stars going with, with, with Lily made a triumph of, of Lola, and now, uh, and now we see that Lily has made a, a, a big opinion for, for, for Lincoln. <laughs> like those were, were, some, were some great connections that, that I see, uh, or, or not connections, uh, comparisons that that, that I see. Uh, um, so yeah, o- overall, like like the, the, this story do- 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 was uh, was really, 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 really great. Not perfect, but still very, very enjoyable for, for me. All right, uh, Nat, what about you? What did you think of Seasons Cheating? Yeah, I kind of agreed with what a lot of what he said. Where it kind of felt like. A callback to season one where we go back to the original premise of the series, which is Lincoln versus his sisters or like Lincoln trying to survive with his sisters. And so we see him trying to figure out a plan to get the best present with his sisters and then like him using his mattress as like a bulletin board and then where he goes out and screams inside of the van. Like, yeah, that's a callback to the sweet spot episode. And then I just liked how, you know, um, his and as usual with like most of those episodes, his selfish tendencies come back to bite him in the butt. But it wasn't too bad. Like we've had some episodes, you know, that were really bad, but this one was really good. Like it showed him that yeah, like he did kind of get what he deserved by having to give up his pr- but his present to get a present because he was too occupied thinking of himself to get his sister a gift. But then I liked the scene with, like, like we talked about earlier where Nickelodeon spoiled it. But then when you actually watch the episode and then you see what leads up to that, I think that made it a lot better. Because you see him after he gave up his present, he was sad. And then we see Lily, like, looking out the window and she's sad. So then she goes and makes him a present because she knows that he's not going to get anything. It was just so cute. Yeah, like, you know, as the resident Lincoln fan here, you know, I a lot of people were worried about this episode, and I'm so glad at the end this episode was so much better than what people expected, because season five, to me, feels like a season that is written by fans of the show. It feels like they've finally gone back to their roots in season one. They're like the t- they, people who have watched season one and said, we need to bring some of this back, you know? We need to bring back Lincoln Talk- Lincoln talking to the audience, which felt so fresh. It felt so great to see that again. Because, you know, season four only had one moment of that, and that was it. Season five, we had school, and now we had this episode again. It feels like they were just going back to what made the Loud House the Loud House. And again, Lincoln versus his sisters kind of thing. But it was just so cool to see Lincoln again being what he's supposed to be, the man with the plan, having all these plans and planning out everything and trying to figure out how to, you know, mess with the gift swap. And again, he was selfish, but he got what he deserved. You know, he had to trade in the gift that he got for a gift for his sister. He realized he made a mistake and he he learned that he should put his sister bef- sisters before him. And again, we've seen that before, but in different scenarios. And of course, you know, see Chandler again, uh, yeah, I... Oh my god. Chandler's the absolute yeah. worst. Like, I don't hate Flip anymore as much as I hate Chandler now. What a jerk. Like, <laughs> why? I just don't like Chandler anymore. What an actual, ass, actual, like, selfish jerk. Like, uh. But, you know, yeah, the movie's plot along. But, yeah, I absolutely love the callbacks to Sweet Spot with Lincoln going into the van- it's Vanzilla. The callback to Cover Girls? By the way, he still has costumes of all his sisters and dresses up like them and to convince, like, his sisters to, or, like, his mom and Lori, which was strange, you know, seeing him dress up as <laughs> the mom and, and, as Rita and, and Lori to get what he wants, but, and he has it all with a filing cabinet, like, what? <laughs> okay, he's, he's come a long way since the, since the, the, um, the case he added it or whatever all the costumes were the cover girls that was it was like they took sweet spot and cover girls and had a baby that's what this episode feels like to me it's a mishmash of two season one episodes and they're both great episodes to me personally but um 
yeah, I, I really liked it. You know, again, I'm a Lincoln fan, so I guess biased, but Lily gave it, giving him the drawing was absolutely adorable. Him crying tears. Oh my God. Oh, I cried. My baby. I love him. He's great. Um, yeah, I just, yeah, I, I, I really loved it. And again, to me, the Lincoln episodes have been top tier this season. Like, I have not had one single complaint about any Lincoln episode this season. You know, school, family bonding. The, uh, the, the, what was it? The news episode, Colonel Truth. This episode, I've had no complaints about Lincoln whatsoever in this season. He's been so much better this season than any other season I've seen him since season one. And that's amazing because, again, he's 12 years old now and it's growing up. So it's not, and again, Lori's at college. So it's nice to see that they're finally giving Lincoln the focus he deserved in season four and see that he's still a badass. You know, he's still the man with the plan. He could do cool things and be awesome, and I love him, and that's why he's the best character in the main show. And I know Bios, but I love him. He's my boy. So, yeah. I Same. I, yeah, he's my boy. He deserves it. After a season that didn't give him anything, but now he deserves it. So, yeah. No, I I really liked it a lot. You know, it's, it's, it's probably a top episode for me, but not like really high because family bonding so my favorite episode of season five but it's probably up there somewhere but yeah really really liked it a lot um so is there anything else you guys want to talk about with season cheaty before we get to the last episode we need to discuss i think i'm good i think we we think we pretty, i think i pretty much covered what, what i said <laughs> oh i forgot about one thing the luna scene right the one with her and lincoln I want oh, yeah, to oh, yeah. know why Lincoln wanted to play a uh, tambourine in Luna's band. <laughs> I want to see that. What? <laughs> How? What? <laughs> why? Okay. Like, okay. First of all, Lincoln played tambourine. Perfect for his character. He's so lame. He plays the tambourine. Adorable. But why? <laughs> <laughs> why do you do that? <laughs> I want to see that. Oh, I want. I want to say, say see uh, uh, an actual episode, another episode that focuses on, on, on Luna and, and Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, we had that since season, season one, and there was that comic where Lincoln became Luna's band manager, which was cool. So I'd like to see that them incorporate that into the show. But you know, it was just really neat <laughs> seeing Lincoln do all his man with the plan stuff, dressing up as the sisters to convince the other sisters to do this gift swapping. You know, I still, yeah, I still I still like Mr. Coconuts. One day I want to see Mr. Coconuts just. Leave like Luann. Yeah, he was. Luann was well, 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 to, uh, to give uh, Lincoln the uh, the rip hardcore backpack, but no, because of the darn Mr. Coconuts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he used to just he used to just be there, and they made like in the last season they made him so annoying. Yeah, I just they made it so like when Luann wants to be mean, they'll just put her on Mr. Coconuts and blame the puppet, which, again, when you're saying this stuff, it's not Mr. Coconuts, it's you who's making him say it, so please stop. Like, yeah, like in the like in the podcast, when he, he made, or like, in the podcast, he even made Benny upset, like, don't do that! Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, I don't know what, who I hate more, Mr. Coconuts or Chandler, and they're both in this episode. What well, could have been worse if you had Flip, oh wait, right, we had Flip. <laughs> which we're going to do next <laughs> uh, alright so let's talk about the final episode which is oh boy an episode with such a fan favorite character everybody loves this guy right <laughs> uh, so much a flip miss Cra a flip miss carol um a scrooge like flip is visited by three ghosts uh well technically it's four because it's two, <laughs> Lincoln Clyde, so it's four, otherwise it's three. That's official description, not me. Um, three uh, three or four ghosts that take on, uh, on a take of Christmas Carol. So this is a sort of, kind of-ish adaptation of Christmas Carol, which makes sense because Flip is the Scrooge or the Loud House. But, um, so, Vincent, uh, what do you think about a Flip Miss Carol this episode? What do you think of it? Well... I thought that the episode was good for for for, for what it is, uh, pretty good. Uh, um, uh, my my the feelings for for, for for haven't really changed much, but um, uh, but yeah, I, I, I like the, the, the idea of the episode. Um, it, it did it make me think about the, the, this episode from Tea Time Go a Black Friday, uh, because uh, 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 the, the ghosts, uh, uh, because like 
Um, in two times ago, a Beast Boy and Side Boy go, uh, uh, ghosts of, of uh, uh, Black Friday present, and Lincoln and Clyde are the ghosts of Cruel Christmas present. And in uh, and in two times ago, uh, Raven was the ghost of Black Friday future, and Lucy was the ghost of Christmas future. Because they were also two characters for both gods, and they were both ghosts of the future. <laughs> and it did give me those vibes. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, we did l l l learn that Flip wasn't always a car artist, but uh, after, uh, but it wasn't. It, he wasn't always a car artist, but but it was all, all because of scoots. So uh, yeah, I, I don't know. If, I don't know if it was worse now, Flip or scoots. <laughs> My headcan now is that um, uh, Scoots is uh, Chandler's grandmother because they're both bribers. That's my headcan. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I think Flip is going to somewhat uh, learn his ways of being such a con artist. And you know, I, I, I also really like that it says see Lynn as an elf. <laughs> I, I, I like seeing, seeing that. <laughs> Um, yeah, what else? I want to say, um, I, I gotta say, like, uh, uh Cheryl uh, uh, and Meryl uh, uh, and Flip, um, so they think it is because they're cheek. Um, I, I guess that's something, uh, um, but, but yeah, I think the, 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 the concept of the story was a good, um, my feelings are still mixed up with Flip, uh, um, yeah. And like I said, I, I don't know who, 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 who I, I don't know who, who, who's who, which characters just what. <laughs> like I, I don't know who, which characters what now. Uh, uh, flip or scoots. <laughs> <Why not both>? <laughs> <laughs> yep. But uh, Nat, what about you? What did you think about a flip, Miss Carol? I actually thought it was pretty good because, like you know, over the years we've seen. Lots and lots of Christmas Carol adaptations. Like he was talking, like Vincent was talking about the Teen Titans Go one. And there's, you know, like Sonny has shown me the Muppets one. Yeah. And there's there was like a Looney Tunes one, a Disney, like a Mickey Mouse one. There's just been like so many different ones. I think this one was like for an 11 minute one. Like I was really worried about it because I was like, I feel like this is a story that should at least have an, a half hour. But no, they did it in 11 minutes and without it being overly sad. Like, yeah, they did have like, you know, the moments where they showed him like the results of everything that, that he did with him being a cheapskate where like he ruined the Louds dinner and he gave the McBrides like all the cheap um, inflatables and stuff. But other than that, like it wasn't overly dramatic or anything i think seeing like a bit of a backstory on flip is all was kind of good too because we kind of see that like oh he was you know he wasn't always a bad person and i did like seeing all the other characters too like we saw uh cheryl and her sister and then we had the mcbrides and we haven't seen the mcbrides in forever yeah it was cool to see that's true again. yeah it's been a long time and then um the one thing that I'm curious about, though, is are they going to keep this piece of character development for Flip or not? Like in the it. other episode? No. <laughs> no. Yeah, like I said, Mike. After like last, I said, Mike. After, last, after, last, after last Thanksgiving tried to redeem him, no. I don't believe it. And they do? <laughs> great, I guess. But no. I don't believe Because then, like, if they just make him nice, that would kind of ruin what makes his stick Funny yeah. question mark? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> Mr. Grouse, like, we had him in season one where he was kind of like how Flip is, but not as obnoxious. But then in the first Christmas episode, Eleven Loves Leaping, we see a backstory on him. And so uh, now, up since now, he's, or like, since then, he's kind of been like, he's still the grouchy old neighbor, but like, he's actually more tolerant of the louds now and he's actually nice to them like how we had the episode with him and lynn so like but i don't know about flip because like i said he like you said he is just like that's part of his thing is that he's just obnoxious yeah like he's not i don't 
I don't, like, in this episode, they made Flip seem really mean and, of course, Scrooge-like, but Flip isn't exactly mean, he's just annoying. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. you know, make him, like, <laughs> nice, but he'll still be annoying. That's the, that's the thing with, that's the thing we're kind of, where the, the thing that most of us complain about with Flip, it's not that we hate him as a character, we hate that he's overused in scenes that are not necessary to have him in just because they need something to be funny, you know? It's overusing him too much where it's getting kind of annoying. So, again, I don't think anything... I mean, I know people who like Flip. I, I, I'm, I don't understand why, but that's okay. But you know, like they'll still use him. I guess he'll be more tolerable of the Louds. But again, he has been in the past, so I don't know how they can shape. I, I don't know how they can make him better. But I don't know. I, I don't feel like there's really has. I don't think there's really anything to him that can make him a better character i don't know i really don't know what to do with him at this point i think again if you lose what made him funny then i guess you kind of reduce his character i don't know i don't know what they'll do <laughs> you know, i could think i could th think about on a flip is, is that the fact that he's voiced by john dimaggio i mean you can't yeah. go wrong with him it's true yeah, yeah. why do use him so much because they're like we gotta we got a famous va we gotta use him as much as we can but he voices Mr. Grouse too, so it's like, why, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, like we could have Mr. Grouse is, is like he can be just as funny because like you remember in the um, the boss maybe where he just like randomly comes over and like brings a bulldozer into the yeah. house. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so good. I I I loved in like on thin ice just that moment of like. Mr. Grouse in the parking lot, and he's like, to win, you want to watch the game? It's like, oh, look at them. They still bond. That's nice, you know? Like, yeah. I like that with Mr. Grouse. <laughs> Flip, I just, I don't know what to like about him. But, um, to, uh, anything else you want to say about the episode, Nat? No, other than, I think it was just like, I feel like they were actually using Flips for something good for once. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, like, after getting two heavy hitter episodes, like, getting the Christmas episode and then Seasons Cheating, I was, like, over the moon. Because, like, when I was watching Seasons Cheat, I was still thinking about the Lincoln cameo, and I was, like, so distracted that I had to, like, stop fangirling to watch the Lincoln one. Then I was crying at the end of that Lincoln one, and I'm like, oh, yeah, then there's the Flip episode. So I had, I, I kind of stopped paying attention a bit, and I was like, I have to pay attention because I'm watching these for, for my show. But, um, you know, as an adaptation of Christmas Carol, it's not the best one. Because, again, it's 11 minutes. Yeah. They had to cram so much in 11 minutes, and, again, no Tiny Tim, you know. But they made it work, you know. It's, again, it's not the best one, but they made it the best way they could. I wish it could have been 22 minutes, but... I don't know, a 22 minute flip episode, I don't know how I would feel about that, but, you know, I think it would have been better in 22 minutes, but I have some nitpicks about this episode. I, again, they're tiny nitpicks. I don't believe Lynn Sr. could be so tied up with his restaurant that he would forget a very important day of cooking Christmas Eve and Christmas di Day dinner. I don't believe that, you know? I believe that he'd be on his game when it comes to cooking. Like, I get it. You know, you're busy on the holidays, but he's the, he cooks all the time for his family. I wouldn't believe that he wouldn't forget a very important dinner of a very special holiday, you know, but that's just a tiny nitpick on my end. But they need to do that for plot. But, um, you know, I, I don't believe this will be, like, something that changes Flip for the better just because the whole thing with the ghosts was just a dream of his, which... I love the design of the ghost, by the way. Like, like Lincoln and Clyde as ghosts are adorable, like, really cute with the holly. Like, I love, like, I found it strange that they decided to make both Lincoln and Clyde ghosts of Christmas present. I mean, I guess it makes sense because they had the whole thing with the McBrides, but it was just kind of strange that they decided to do both of them instead of just Lincoln or Clyde, you know? But, of course, we gotta have Clicking with Cloud, but it reminded me in the Muppet Christmas Carol where in that adaptation, uh, Marley is someone who works for Scrooge, and I think Lynn was kind of the Marley in this case, because she worked for Scrooge. But in that one, oh, they yeah. Marley and Marley, because they made Statler and Wardorf, both Marley in that adaptation. So for any adaptation, you can, like, change things up. So, uh, you know, I was like, why are they both 
the ghost of Christmas present, but I guess that makes sense. But um, the scene I found really funny was when Lucy showed uh, Flip his grave, and it was just a pizza box with his name on it. <laughs> like, oh my god, that was funny. It reminds me of, um, there's an episode of Darkwing Duck called Dead Duck. It's an episode where uh, Darkwing uh, gets into an accident and he thinks he died. So, like, there's a scene where there, uh, Death comes to show him what happened at his grave, and his grave is just a flower pot with his picture on it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it reminded me of. And, like, nobody cares about Flip so much that they only had a pizza box with his name on it. That's what it reminded me of. It's so funny. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, you know, at the end, Flip, of course, was, you know, giving all these things away even though he technically wasn't going to give away the flippy machine, which you should, because Lincoln was very happy to see it. But, you know, very very nice adaptation. Not my favorite adaptation of it. And, of course, it should have been 22 yeah. minutes. But still, they made it work. Like, they, they made it work very well. And, you know, nice to get some backstory on Flip and see the younger version of him again. Strange, but all right. You know, because they had to make the whole Scrooge thing work into the story. But, you know... I, I I liked it. I liked it very much. You know, it it doesn't change my opinion of Flip after you know that terrible episode with him and Lisa, but still very solid. I it was it was good, very good, <laughs> very good indeed. All right, so that is our reviews of all the Christmas episodes of the Loud House and the Casa Grandes. And the last thing I want to do for this uh, episode is talk about our highlights for both shows in 2020. Because this is going to be our my last show for 2020 for Casa Lau Chats. Very sad, but we are going to be coming back in next year. So I asked lots of people on Twitter what are their highlights for 2020 of both the Loud House and the Casa Grandes. So I want to, so I want to read a, a bunch of these to you guys before I ask you guys some of your favorite highlights from this year from both shows. So hey. first... I'm going to read a one from my good friend Nino, who's been on the show. He says, uh, Jerry Antics has been my favorite season four episode because of how it handled the theme of accepting the event, the edible loss of a loved one, which is something a lot of shows in Loud House's category don't really touch upon. And 2020 gave a stress test and maybe love Bobby, school, the family bonding episode, the scene. I know what scene you're talking about. In curse, the scene, yes. And the entirety <laughs> of the Christmas care. Uh, no, the entirety of very consecrated Christmas. All right, thank you very much, Nino. All right, next is from Burster, of course, my good, my good buddy, my Sedani fan buddy, <laughs> Burster. He writes, uh, the Castagrande episodes were all right, but some were just terrible, like Fast Feud and the Bird Has Flown. I absolutely agree. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the Castagrande episodes this year, just for season one, weren't really that great to me. There was a lot of, like, duds, but until the ending, of course. Um... It just couldn't compete with the ones from 2019. The last of episodes were pretty good, like school, they family bonding. Others like house flip, not so much. <laughs> uh, yeah. Gotta love that flip episode. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, next one. <clears throat> um... My Chiller writes, For the Loud House, I think School was the highlight episode this year. Also, Family Bonding. I love that everybody agrees Family Bonding is a great episode. Come on! It's the best episode. <laughs> I agree. Um, because it showed that they were jumping they were jumping out of the predictable endings. I personally enjoyed Blind by Science. You're, you're okay to have that opinion. It's alright to have wrong opinions. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, next is from Postergeist 300, which is Rooster, our good buddy Rooster. Um, he writes, uh, family bonding, Lincoln was right moment. Everybody loves family bonding! I, come on! Like, everybody <laughs> loves this, this top tier episode, Loud House. Now you gotta make a sequel. I'm just saying, make the sequel episode now. Everybody likes it. It's on the list. Uh, schooled, of course. Um, cursed. Uh, Mar Mary, Mary Footmas of Eric Footmas Carol. And many more, but I'll stick to those. All right. Uh, JD, my good pal JD, writes, schooled. The announcement of season six at Casa Grande season three. Yeah! We're getting season six and season three of Casa Grande. That was exciting. Oh, yeah. That was very exciting. We're going to be a fan of these shows for a long time. It's very exciting. Um, oh, yeah. <clears throat> Plus, we have the movie coming out next year, too. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. And the Christmas episodes. Uh, let's see. Um, K. N Nero writes, For starters, Lori became my favorite Slough sister. Yeah! Best sister. <laughs> 
<laughs> best sister Lori always. Although Lola might be might be my favorite now just because of the uh, Lincoln got Lola the Christmas episode. So I may be a little keen to Lola now. Um, the Devil Dare episode was amazing. Family Bonnie, of course, Ghosted, and the Flipmas Carol. Um, as for the Casa Grandes, aside from the Christmas episode, two episodes stuck to me. Mexican Makeover for showing Mexican culture and Uptown Funk with Carl and Adelaide. Both very solid episodes, I agree. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, Rio Gilbert Gann writes, Perfect gig was so special to me personally because it gave an opportunity to reveal myself that I'm actually bisexual. Good for you. I'm proud of you. And it was obvious to know that both Luna and Sam are officially a couple in the show nowadays. Both of them precious ladies that must be protected. I agree. Um, also, schooled is also a great moment, particularly as a milestone for the show itself. Hey, it's time that we have these kids grow up. And it's the right thing to do with the show. I don't care if anybody rants about them aging up. Yeah, we, we don't need to get into that. <laughs> um, also, curse is a fun moment because we get to see, no pun intended, two families, one roof, the lads of the casas, and one house together, and one of the greatest moments to have both Roddy and Lincoln together at the table. I agree. <laughs> Absolutely. Love seeing them together. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Amno... M Emmy Pre News says, Kurt schooled the last two minutes of family bonding, and all three Christmas episodes between both shows are my personal highlights. Um, Vider Storm God says, For me, see this cheating where Luke, where, oh, where Luna and Link have a couple of cute sibling moments together, and she buys the present he wanted. No, it's cliche, but I love sibling moments with the big sis and little bro. Yeah, that was sweet of Luna to do that. Very good. I like that. Um, bye. Baiti and Ferb21 says, For the Loud House episodes like School, Don't You Forget About Me, of course. Uh, Coop Dreams stand out on the Casa Grande side, Operation Dad, Very Casa Grande Christmas, and VIP'd. Uh, Loud House Fan 9 says, School, how, do how Double Dare You, A Very Casa Grande Christmas, Season Cheating, Ghosted, Family Bonding, Curse, and Friends of Dry Places were some of my highlights for the Loud House of the Casa Grandes in 2020. I also don't know if anyone noticed, but the animation's gotten better. I agree. And then lastly, Efron, La La Efron Loud, my good buddy, says, Cursed. Yeah, those are a lot of great highlights. I agree. Um, what about you guys? What, are, what have been some of your biggest highlights for 2020 with both shows? Uh, Vincent, why don't you go first? Some of your favorite highlights from these episodes this year, or anything from the Loud House of the Casa Grandes in 2020 to you. Oh, man. Where do I begin? List them all. Uh, <laughs> well, well, first of all, uh, uh, don't you forget about it. it was a big one for me. Um, as much as I, I loved uh, uh, Lori uh, uh, and uh, Lenny in that episode, I mean, they, had, they didn't have to throw a run again, but they did. <laughs> oh my god, I remember when that episode came out, and I saw the moment that Lincoln said he was going to call Roddy, and I screamed my head off, and I'm like, oh my god, the episode, and then the whole episode happened, oh my god, that was Jeez. a highlight for me, man. Alright, continue, sorry. That's <laughs> alright. Um, let's see. Uh, um... I, I, I really did, did enjoy school, uh, uh there, was a, there was some big challenges that I had, uh, uh for, for Lincoln and his friends, uh, Lori and, and, and even Lily. Um, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. Do, do, do. Uh, oh yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. The curse was really enjoyable. Um, especially like, like the what when what when the custom brothers left the louds and they, they, they just but it was just running out sad pain and then. Uh, to, to be at the screen, uh, eh, so zoomed out to show Lincoln, and then he says, "Somebody later." Like, oh my god! Oh my <laughs> like, god! <laughs> I still think about that moment. The fact, like, you know, again, like they made it sad enough, but Lincoln saying, "Smell you later" for the first time in their relationship. Oh, they didn't have to do that, but they did. And I still think about it too much. Uh. <laughs> yes. Um. Uh. I think I I have to agree with with that uh, with Jerry antics because uh, you know sometimes when people get get old and, and uh, I don't know that the and uh, of course we can't forget Fred Willard. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think, I think of someone else. Oh, oh, oh yeah, probably good was a really a, a big a, a, a step up for for Saluda fans. 
<laughs> uh, and God, the, 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 this thing oh, was just beautiful. Um, let me think. Uh, boy. Uh, yeah, yeah, obviously, obviously, a very custom party to uh, uh, Christmas uh, and you know, seasons. Uh, she uh, was stand out for, for, for me. To, uh, 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 and I, I really enjoyed. Uh, uh, I really enjoyed a, what was it, a game off because uh, you know it had that that, that kind of a, a strong relationship between you know, Leek and Lana. Oh. Like I want to. Oh yeah, that's a good one too. I love that episode. That's my favorite season four episode. Like I gave that episode a ten out of ten, which I've never done for any episode in both shows. Like, oh, it's so perfect. <laughs> Yes, uh, like I want, uh, I want to. Uh, uh, that's that's the kind of thing I, I want to feel uh, uh, for 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 the lot house, like that that kind of strong relationship uh, uh, going on uh, 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 between Lincoln and and, and sisters, uh, his sisters and Diddy and his friends in, in general. Um. Well, so yeah, what else? Oh, oh yeah, I really enjoy the friends in, in, in dry places because uh, you know the, the, this the change it changes in the air, and, and, and you know his friends are, are, are still going to be there for, for, for like because they're they're they're, they're, cool. they're my they're my favorite king. I mean, I, I, I love I, I love Sadonikin, but but yeah, I, I, I really love Lincoln and a suit. Lincoln's group of friends there. And, um, let's see. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. I honestly can't think of anything else. Like, those are the other ones that I can think of at the top of my head. <laughs> All right. And, Nat, what about you? Do you have any big highlights for the Loud House of the Casa Grande days this year in 2020? I actually had two episodes on my birthday this year. It was Feast or Family and A Dark and Story Night. And those were both pretty fun i feel like um feast or family no one really talks about that one but it was like luann and her dad and so i thought that one was really wholesome because we see you know it showed how much lynn senior really cares about his kids because he's so excited to see one of them take interest in something especially with luann because he they already have like the jokes that they do together and stuff. And then the story one, that one was really fun because I thought it was like, or it was really cool. Cause like, this is a show where like, we don't really see a lot of fantasy stuff. And so that one was just like all the kids coming together to make a story. It was really creative. Um, I'm trying to look at the ones that came out this year. So we also had, um, like I know somebody mentioned perf um, perfect gig. Yes. That one was really fun. And like, I think, if you guys remember, I think that was one that Kevin Sullivan told me about, like, last, like, a while ago. He said that there was going to be an episode like that. And so I was like, oh, my gosh, finally, we get to see it. And then there was also the community disservice one with Lola. That one was really good, too. Oh, yeah, that's so, like, yeah. my favorite Lola episode ever. It's a perfect Lola episode. Like, like, again, with Lola episodes, she's undefeated, man. No episode with her is bad. She has absolutely perfect episodes to me. <laughs> I think I love Melly. Oh, yeah. And then I like, yeah, yeah, Melly was adorable. They brought her back in the Stripe of the Party episode as a cameo. Mm -hmm. They remember her. <laughs> And then, um, and then for Valentine's Day, we had like the two love themed episodes, the one with Lynn and then the one with Clyde was so cute because oh. like, I remember we, we all Thanks. thought that it was going to be him and Emma, but then it was him and Chloe. Bring back Chloe. At the end. Bring back Clyde Toey. Bring back Chloe. Bring back Chloe. <laughs> so cute. Clyde. I'm like, you guys gave, like they finally gave Clyde an actual love interest who's not one of Lincoln's sisters, especially Lori. And so they they need to bring her back. <laughs> yeah, they need to bring her back. I swear. Don't don't pull Rocky on her. Bring her back. <laughs> um. Let's see. Oh, Star was Star is scorned was really cute too. The one with Lola and Lily. That one was really cute too. And I just love Lily because I love babies. So like anything with Lily is automatically adorable. Let's see. I'm trying to look at the different ones. Hmm. And then, well, like, I think this one is just, like, a general thing, but, like, I really liked how this year we finally got to see the kids age up and, like, move on. Like, 
Lincoln going to middle school, Lori going to college, and Lenny being the um, oldest in the house, and Lily finally getting out of diapers. So, like, that's something, like, if you've been a fan of the show since season one, that's something that we've wanted for years. And we finally got it this year. So even despite all the bad things that happened this year, you can think that that's one good thing that happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, and speaking of which, like, I really did like Schooled. That one was really good, especially for the first hour-long special. That one was really, really good. It was like a mini-movie, pretty much. And... I think for season five so far, I think that's probably, aside from the Christmas episodes, I think that's probably the best one. And, oh, and family bonding too, because that one just had like a twist ending that we, nobody was expecting. Family bonding still best episode of season five. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, for the Casa Grandes, like you guys said, it's kind of been like a dry year for them. But it is just the first season, so I think this is just them trying things out to see what people like and stuff. Um, let's see. Because I'm looking at the episodes, and there isn't really any that, like, stick out to me aside from maybe the, oh yeah, the Mexican Metcover one. And then, um, I don't remember the name of it, but it was... Th- the one where they wanted to do the dancing. I missed that. Oh, yeah. Yes. Those two, I think, were really cool because of the how they show the Mexican culture. Like, I think that's definitely this show could have, like, a bunch of dud episodes. But then they have an episode like that, and it's always good. Just because of, some like, people like me who are interested in learning about culture, different cultures and stuff. So. And then season two so far... Like you said, we can't talk about some of the episodes just yet, but the ones that we have seen is the, yeah, the Halloween ones. Those were, those were okay. <laughs> well, I mean, we can't say what we saw from um, Meal Ticket. Oh, yeah. It looks really yeah. good, though. Like, very good, yeah. actually. Yeah, we haven't had a Sid and Ronnie Ann episode in so long, because it feels yeah. like they've been focusing more on Ronnie Ann with her family. Right, yeah, I mean, I... You know, I felt like they had an abundance of Sidani episodes, but then this year, we only had, like, Fast Few, the one that Burster absolutely hates, and that was it, <laughs> just to focus on the family, which I'm like, I'm glad that they're doing that, but then I was like, well, we need Sidani, you know, like, Queen of McCloud had yeah. so many episodes, like, we kind of need to get back to, you know, the main best yeah. tr- mm-hmm. of the epi- of duo of the, epi- of the show. <laughs> Yeah, and like I think Sid and Ronnie Ann had more episodes back in season four of The Loud House, and I think yeah. that was probably because that that was where Sid was first introduced. So that was just kind of like everyone trying to like them trying to show us show Sid to us to get her kind of acquainted with everyone, I guess. Yeah, and now that you know they've added her family and the other neighbors and stuff, so they're like trying to okay, like someone said on uh. Someone said somewhere where it's like the Casa Grandes has a huge supporting cast, like even bigger than what yeah. the Art House had before. So it's hard that they have to juggle all these supporting characters and just put them in random scenes, which I kind of complain about because they do the same thing with Flip, where they do in Casa Grandes, where they don't know what to do. So they just put a random neighbor in an episode where it's like, why are you here? I don't know, because we need to establish that this is a big city, but you know. It, it makes it hard, because, like, when you want to do, like, a focus episode on, like, Sidani, for example, in Meal Ticket, you gotta shove Sergio in there. Why? I don't know. You just need to, <laughs> I guess. But, uh, yeah. Um, anything else about Casa Grandes? What else they have in store for season two? Because, like, I think we already know a lot about Ronnie Ann and Bobby, because we spent the Loud House with them, so I want to see more stuff with the cousins. I still want a episode with Bobby and Ronnie and only. Because we don't oh, know yes. about them as siblings. Because again, like, mm-hmm. they're brother and sister, and they've barely had an episode. Like, Ronnie has had episodes with spending time with all her family members, but not her brother. You know, like, we need to ask an yeah. episode about them, because they spent their entire lives together, even in yeah. one was before they moved to the city. But now and they're especially. All- yeah, no, go ahead. Oh, and I was saying, especially because when they were in the Loud House, they kind of made it a big deal that, you know, Ronnie Ann and Bobby didn't have their mom around that much, so it was just the two of them all the time. Yeah, so I've talked about before, like, I had a dream where I had 
my dream episode where Roddy and Bobby talk about, like, you know, back in Royal Woods, we didn't have a lot. And now we're in the city, we have so much now, but even though we have more than what we had before, we'll always have each other. Like, that's what I've always wanted, to, like, represent their relationship, and I hope we get an episode like that in season two, just with them. You know, I, I, as much as I like Sid or Sergio or whatever, I just want an episode about them. You know, that, that, just give me that, and I won't ask for anything more. Just Roddy and Bobby, sit, like, I'm happy the Christmas episode focused on them a lot, but I want a full-on bonding episode with just those two that's all i want for season two yes yeah, if yeah that they had they had a story in the like live in the cuss lot yeah in the comics like, oh that was my dream episode again like because Lori, when bobby has Lori and roddy and has lincoln you know they can bond over their connection with the louds too if they wanted to do that they probably won't but i've always wanted that where it's like they have something they have in common they both have partners in the same family that's something that, that could bring them closer as well but it's like will they do that probably will not but i still want a bonding episode <laughs> <laughs> but uh let's yes see. as for me you know um for the loud house uh let's see well of course Family bonding, best season five episode, I've said before. Like, I'm so glad other people agree, because that episode, again, took what should have been a Lincoln learns another lesson or learns not to judge episode and says, yeah, Lincoln can be right sometimes and we need to trust him. Very good, season five. I agree with you. School, of course, <laughs> highlight, loved it. First one hour special. You know, I have complaints about it, but it's still a good special overall. Not as amazing as family bonding, but second to that. Um, Let's see. Of course, don't you forget about me, like, when that episode drops, and, like, again, the moment I heard Lincoln say, you know, maybe I should meet up with Roddy, and I had the biggest heart attack ever, <laughs> like, and then, like, seeing them together throughout the entire episode, just them together, like, Lincoln spent the whole day with her, not even with his family, and, like, they're together, I had, the, I was so happy that day that I had, I had homework to do that day, and I just, like, quickly motivated myself to do homework that day because I was so happy. I was, like, on the moon that day. That was amazing. Um, let's see. With Loud House, uh, trying to think what else this year. Um, yeah, Fred, Friends of Dry Places I like, too, because it really fueled a lot of my Lincoln has anxiety about losing his friends headcanon, so it was a nice episode, you know, to get an episode about all the friends again because I do like Lincoln's friend group and it's really cool that they're super close and Lincoln sees them as a second family. It's really adorable. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, the 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 boss maybe. I love that episode because we finally get to see <clears throat> we finally get to see Lenny step into the um the leader role and become the oldest sibling of the siblings now that Lori's in college. So that was really cool because again season five, the fact that the characters are aged up. And we're seeing Lincoln in middle school, Lori in college, Lenny taking the role, and now Lily, you know, out diapers and wearing a t-shirt and shorts. It's so cool that they finally aged up the characters. And in the Casa Grandes were cursed. Uh, the, the Casa Grandes, I believe, takes place between seasons four and season five. Because in Curse, <laughs> Lily is wearing her shirt and pants. So it has to take place sometime in season five if they co yeah. the same universe there. So I guess the yeah. la I guess the oh I was just gonna say I guess the Casa Grande's characters might have aged up like in the middle of the Loud House season five or yeah, something. Because we have no basically we have no idea if the Casa Grande's aged up like the Louds because they haven't said like oh Rodian is twelve years old now so unless she's gonna stay eleven just one year younger than Lincoln but I would assume she's older now like him and Sid is Sid is older than Ronnie is so she would be thirteen now. Because Sid is twelve, well, was twelve. So maybe maybe we'll have a um an, a school episode with Rodney and her gang going up to middle school. Unless they already are, but I don't know. We we have no idea. But I think they're aged up. We have no idea with that. But since they take place in season five, I assume they're aged up like the loud. So you know, but just yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, uh, blah, 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 blah. yeah, cursed. Obviously, a highlight. My biggest anticipated episode of any of both anything from both shows of this year like 
Finding out Curse was a crossover, you know, that catered to my needs. Seeing more Roddykin, absolutely love, you know, the scene of, the, of Roddy and putting her hand on the window. I cried. That was so surprising. We can say, smell you later. Oh my god, why would you do that to me? <laughs> you know, um, the, the Linky cameo in the Christmas episode was the greatest, like, moment of me winning. 2020, the end of 2020, I'm like, thank you for giving me the Lincoln cameo at the end of Christmas episode, and that line, and giving those hints that Lincoln was so nervous because he wants to see Roddy and absolutely love. Um, yeah, again, Casa Grandes has been my main focus for this podcast before I change it to both shows, and 2020 was not nice to the Casa Grandes, like, man, they had so many dry episodes in season one that I just don't think were highlights, but like, um, <clears throat> misstep, obviously, a highlight, because when I saw Rodia's dress, I had to draw it. That drew it, like, super fast, so I did. Um, I liked Who's Shopping for Dinner, because it took what should have been a boring episode, but did really uh, cool things with it. Uh, the Mexican makeover I liked, just because Rodia's dress was cute, and I drew it, because Family Bonnie was premiering the same day. Um, Uptown Funk, Carl and Adelaide were super cute together, and the first... A first uh, episode with no Roddy in it, so they were confident enough to do an episode without her, which is cool. So they're gonna do that in season two as well. Uh, spoilers, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I think for season two, for what we've seen of it so far, they are improving, but I don't think it's at a high level yet, as some episodes were. Like season one, Casa Grande's last year, they had so many heavy hitters, horoscope, two of clubs. Or the family, you know, like, all those heavy hitters. We had Operation Dad, which to me is, like, was a heavy hitter, their first special, but not as great as it should have been. You know, I have complaints about the ending, but, you know. Yeah. It's it's just, you know, like, Casa Grande's had a slow, slow journey, like, really slow. Like, they had some really high highs and then super low lows, but I think season two. Yeah really is going to try to improve that, especially Meal Ticket, from what I've seen, looks great so far. And again, no spoilers, but the other episodes were good as well. But again, I think, you know, with season two, now that they see what they've done with season one, I think they need, they're they learning now that they need to improve on the things that they did in season one and go from there. And hopefully we'll see more of what they're improving on with season two. Because I think season one was solid, but I think season two needs to be a vastly huge improvement from season one to me personally. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Um, so uh, before we wrap this up, I actually want to ask a question to you, Vincent, first. For 2021, what what do you want to see from the future of the Loud House of the Casa Grandes? Are there any episode ideas or anything that you want to see from both shows next year coming up? Well, first of all, Obviously, for me, give us a Satori King episode. Yes! <laughs> Please. <laughs> okay, yeah, and then next up, uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, for the Casa Grande, so, um, maybe it may be, yeah, maybe we could see more interaction between uh, uh, uh oh, Lori, I mean, not Lori, uh, Bobby and, and Ronnie Ann, uh, um. We just we just explore more between uh, Arturo and Maria's relationship. Uh, uh, why they got the, the divorced? Um, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, the, 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 let's see. Yeah, the, 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 that's that's pretty much uh, uh, what, what I can th what I can th th think of. Um, okay. As for as for as for the Loud House, uh, um, maybe we'll, we'll explore. Uh, uh, I would like to see see more, uh, uh, more episode or so like what, what what Lincoln and his friends will will, will, will do, uh, uh, you know, being be, be in middle school now and all, uh, we'll see what 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 kind of I know and things that 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 they'll do next year, uh, um, no no with Lenny being the oldest, maybe an interaction between her her and Lincoln and. Uh, and uh, try to see what else. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And can, can we kick it again? An episode about Luna and the Wan. <laughs> yes. Uh, come on. That's where I do it. We've been fighting for for five seasons, and yet we still haven't gotten a Luna and the Wan episode. <laughs> <laughs> it should be so easy. 
they do it. They hate each other for some reason. Explore it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. And then, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think, I think that's not pretty much what I, had, what I got. All right. And Nat, what about you? Is there anything that you want to see from the Loud House or the Casa Grandes in, or both in 2021? First of all, the movie. Oh, yes. Of the course. Movie, of course. <laughs> <laughs> the movie, yes. We're all excited for the movie. But I mean, for the, the movie. shows. Yeah, the movie. Yes. Yeah. Anything for the for shows. The sh- for the show? <laughs> I don't know. I kind of want to see a like a dance episode. Oh. And I'm not sure either with um like I know we've had like we had dance dance resolution back in season 1 and then we had the we had the Sadie Hawkins dance or is that what it was? Yeah, with like we talked about earlier where Clyde wanted to go with Emma, but I think we should have like a high school one. With where we can see like Luann with Benny and then Luna with Sam, like them going to the dance together. Cause like, you know how every cartoon nowadays has like a prom or a dance episode? Like yeah. the Loud House needs to get on that one. Well, that's true. Yeah. Especially cause like in the Valentine's Day one, they didn't dress up or anything. I wanna see them actually dress up for a dance, like have them in dresses and suits. Like, yes. do that. Yeah. And also, like, most of the shows that have done that it was like with their um the what like the sapphic or like the women loving women couples and so i'm like loud house y'all have saluna y'all can get on the trend of having two girls dance together at a dance come on (laughs) that one or um oh i had i had another one i was trying to think of what it was i think that was it and like i don't know just more shipping stuff Oh, but yeah. also, yeah, also, um, for Casa Grandes, I'm not sure m- other than, like, um, like, what you guys said pretty much with, like, Bobby, Ronnie, Ann episode, or, like, also just, like, more stuff with the cousins, because, like, aside from Carl, because, like, Carl's had a lot of episodes, but, like, we need more, like, CJ and Carlota stuff, and maybe, like, their parents, too, like, we don't see their parents that much aside from, like, gags. yeah. So I think just like the whole Casa Grande family in general, they need more. Aside yeah. from like maybe Rosa, because Rosa gets a lot of stuff too. Oh yeah, cause, well we're getting that uh, CJ and Carlota episode coming up, so we're getting. Oh yes. That. Yeah, and then we're getting that Maria episode where uh, Ronnie and helps Maria get that trip and stuff. So we're getting stuff like that eventually. Oh yeah. yeah no spoilers. I can't say anything. <laughs> no, I think that's good. And then yeah, outside of the show. I hope maybe we'll get some more merch next year. Oh, yeah. There's supposed to be more graphic- I would love... What was that? Oh, what were you going to say? I was saying there's more graphic novels coming out, of course. So we- oh, yeah. I would yeah. love... I would also love some new toys, because the toys that we had before, I think Where they're all discontinued now. They <laughs> yes, oh, we yeah, need they one. Have- no, Rodney, they I have- need my shipping! <laughs> <laughs> they have like a Bobby. There's a Bobby plush, but not a Ronnie Ann. Yeah, one. and she's the main Come character on. of the Casa Grandes. Come on, she's the main character. Now. Give her a plush. Put her next to Lincoln and make them kiss. So I'll have that show. I can live my fantasies now. <laughs> some more? Yeah, like that's what I want. Is like more toys, more maybe some more shirts or something. Just like stuff like that. I mean, they're making a Casa Grande DVD. I hope they make more Casa Grande mm-hmm. merch. Because again, give me a Rodia figure or it's plush. Oh, yeah. And I can put her next and to I know, kid. <laughs> and I know, like, there was some limited time stuff at Comic Con, which I think you were able to. Somebody yeah. sent you one. Ryan did. He sent me a bunch of stuff. Like, he sent me a lot of the promotional <laughs> stuff they did for Comic Cons, which are amazing. They're part of my collection. And, but yeah, you had to get those online and he bought them for me. <laughs> But yeah. give them to the public would be great. Just figures. Plush. Roddy and plush. Official. Roddy and yeah. plush. 2021. And like, I want it. There are, and like, there are some loud siblings that don't even have toys. Like, I think Luann, has, Luann got a plushie and Lynn got a plushie. But like, the figures that we had, like, they only had certain siblings. So yeah. like, at least, I think, I think all of them have had a toy now. But like only certain ones got plushies, certain ones got figures. But like Bobby I just want uh, a plushie and not Roddy the yeah. main character of the <laughs> Friday, by the way, has a close relationship with Lincoln, but no, 
Why did Ooh. Bobby get toys? Not right here. <laughs> you know what, what? You know what would be really fun to have is what? like you know how they have like those doll houses. They could have a dollhouse of the Loud House and then one with, like, the Casa Grande's oh apartment. God. And, like, you can <laughs> buy both of them and then have figures. You can buy the figures separately and then, like, connect them together. Oh like, that would God. be so oh, much fun. That. that would be the dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That, like, Nick, if Nicholas was saying, get on that. Write notes. <laughs> I would buy, like, like, I, like, We're listen, I am... I am almost 23 years old. I will buy a Loud House dollhouse. Dude, it, 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 anything they make with Roddy in, I will buy. It's $100. If you give me that Roddy in plus it's $100, I will pay for it the moment it comes out. I'm getting that. Or a figure or something. Any of Roddy in, please. I need more merchandise with my girl on it. Definitely. But yeah. Any toys that, any toys that, 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 that went to... Uh, uh. Any any merchandise uh, is a toy set that uh, uh, that, that I can pop by and maybe like a play set and with, with, with little figures that I want to play with. I, I'd be done with that. <laughs> yeah. So as for me for 2021, I you know I I've talked about this before and I still want it to happen. You know I you know I love the episode horoscope with Lincoln and Roddy and focusing on the relationship, but I really just want an episode about Lincoln and Roddy and that's like a Click and McCloud or Sidani episode. You know, like one where they're yes. helping each other in a situation, like working together on something or helping each other out and just focus on their friendship, their growing friendship in that way. Because Don't You Forget About Me was a great cameo, but I, but like, you know, some people complained that we shouldn't have gotten that in the episode and I don't disagree because if you want Lincoln and Roddy and to like have fun together or something, just... Give us a full episode about it, you know, like like a Click of McCloud episode or Sidani episode. Like that's my dream episode, you know, because again, Horoscope was great, but it was like the ship. It will always be the shipping bait episode. Just give one about their close, you know, friendship in some way as a full episode, and we would all be satisfied. Like I would be happy just to get an episode about them just working together as close friends, and that's how you like build on their bond and stuff. So that's what I want to see if they do another crossover or bring Lincoln back into the Casa Grandes or Roddy Ann coming into the Loud House again and officially visiting Royal Woods by herself like Lincoln did a horoscope in the city. Like, just do that and I'll be really happy. Just, you know, because again, I I don't want them to be afraid to do an episode about them because our, our you know, we go chaotic with, 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 when we see them together shipping. But it would just be nice to see one about their friendship. So... I would like to see that yeah. further down. Um, especially especially because we have Miguel and like he knows that we like them together, like even as friends. Yeah. And we know he does too, because remember when he shared all that Ronnie can art on his Instagram? <laughs> Again, like he gave us that iconic moment in Curse. I'm just saying. Like, and again, like Lincoln at the end of the Casa Grande episode, like I'm sure that was his idea. <laughs> you know? I'm sure he gave us that. Like I'm sure that wasn't in the script. He probably wrote that in. But yeah, just like anything with them is great, of course, because I love seeing them together. But I would want, I just want a full on episode just with them and no one else. I mean, you could pop and sit if you want, or a family member or something, or the Loud House. You can have a sister or whatever. But just them in a full on episode about their friendship would be great. So you could just grow their bond still. I mean, we want to see them hook up. In some sort of way. But before that, just grow their bond. Um, and then, of course, Bobby and Roddy and Bonnie episode. That's my dream episode. Um, I want Arturo and Maria backstory episode. I want an episode about how they divorced and how it affected their family. Just give me a backstory episode. That's all I want with Arturo and Maria. I mean, even if they just, like, tell us how they divorced would be nice. But I want, like, an episode like in The Simpsons, how Homer and Marge met. I want that episode with Arturo and Maria. I want a backstory episode so badly with them. I'm so hyper fixated on how they how they got together and divorced. Just give me a backstory episode. Um, oh yes. The cousins need more focus, like Carlota and CJ, and like just let Sergio and Carl take a back seat for season two. <laughs> we had enough of them. Just give them give the other cousins focus. The other like Frida and Carlos and the others. Sid episode. We need to focus Sid episode. Give her one like Clyde had. We need focus in episode. Uh, Loud House. More Lenny be the oldest sibling. More Lori in college. Give us an actual good episode with Lori in college. Not Ghosted. I'm sorry. Ghosted was not a good episode to be the first 
fairway episode. Give her, give her what was she struggling in school. Like, just, just do that. Like, why did it have to be that episode? I don't know. But I want an actual good episode of Lori in, in college. Um, more looking at his friends in middle school and the problems they face with that. Uh, Lily in preschool. Right, she's in preschool now, right? Yeah. So, uh, yes. Yes, I want to see a, like a Rugrats style episode with Lily in preschool. Yeah. That was one thing that I was going to say and I forgot. Yeah. Where she has like little baby friends and like they don't necessarily talk, but it's like in Rugrats where like they can talk, but it's only to each other. Yeah. Yes, she can. Yes, she can make a new friends that are over there. Yeah, baby friends. Yeah. And of course, my last <laughs> day, of course, like you said, Vincent, Sonati Kid full on episode, just the three of them. Like, I, that will be the dream we get a Sid, Roddy, and a Lincoln episode. Like, that it will be the dream, man, we can ever get that. But, um, yeah, and hopefully, I was going to say highlights for 2020, the Roddy Kid vlogs have been the most blessed thing to ever come out of the fandom, like, ever. Like, indeed. Like, Whoever came up with that idea is so genius. I hope they got a million dollars that day. <laughs> Whoever came up with that idea for the vlogs, because the podcast, I want the podcast to come back. Do those still exist? Yes. Yeah. Like, that's already familiar sounds. It's been gone since January. Does that podcast still exist? <laughs> I don't know. Come on. Uh, I mean, they have it. Uh, they, they picked up uh, uh, on a, a new season for, 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 for it. Uh, listen out loud. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can they do it again? <laughs> Yeah, and even Casa Grande's got another season. We don't know when that's coming back, so hopefully it comes back very soon, especially during the hiatus. So we'll need content during the hiatus loud House of Casa Grande's. Give us some good stuff. But anyway, that's about it for me, like, just those ones. All right, so we're about to wrap this up here, and uh, Vincent and Nat, thank you guys so much for coming on to my show. I had a really fun time having you both on again. So again, thank you so much for doing this again. Yeah. Hey, who was... Hey, it was great being here with, with, with you girls. All right, yeah, so, you too. Yeah. So, uh, Nat, before we go, would you like to plug your social media? Yeah, so you guys can follow me on Twitter at Wyoming Parmesan. And I also have an Instagram. It's Wyoming2016. And what about you, Vincent? We you want to plug your social media? Uh, yeah, it's my full name, Vincent Suffolk. Uh, S-O-P-H-U-O-K. That's my full username, and uh, I'm on Instagram. Uh, uh, that's my last name, S-O-P-H-U-O-K. So check us out. All right, and as for me, if you have any questions about the podcast or want to discuss the podcast with me, you can contact me over at Excite Clips on Twitter or at the podcast's Twitter, Casa Loud Chats. And we'll see you next time sometime in 2021 or 2021 because this is my official last show for 2020. <laughs> Very crazy that I've been doing the show for like, now it's going to be two years, but this is my official last episode for 2020 because again, we are on hiatus for both shows. Hopefully... Unless they just pull out a last minute episode, but no, they're not going to do that because it's December, so it's the hiatus month. So we'll probably be back sometime in January because that's when the shows mostly come back in January. So again, we'll see you all next time. Hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year on Casa Loud Chat.